What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A23, tips and tricks, and hidden features. So let's get started. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A23, we have a very large 6.6 .6 inch display. Now having a display this big is great for content consumption, like watching videos for example. However, when it comes to reachability, it is pretty tough to navigate around the entire operating system with just one hand. Now thankfully, Samsung actually has a really cool solution for this that's not enabled by default, and it's called one-handed mode. So let me show you how to set that up. So you're going to pull down the shade, you're going to go to the settings, which is this gear icon in the upper right, then from there, go to search, and then type in one-handed, and you'll see right there, one-handed mode. So go there, then go here, and you can see that it is indeed not enabled. So enable that. And then now we have two different options, gesture and button. So technically you can actually do a gesture swipe to get into one-handed mode. However, I definitely think it's a lot faster and easier if you just go with the button method instead. So go there. And then now just by double tapping on the home button, it will shrink the entire operating system down so that you can navigate around the entire phone. So essentially, it's like having a mini phone here and you can easily reach everything with just one hand. Now in addition to that, you can move it over to the other side. So if you are left-handed, you can then use the phone this way. And also in addition to that, you can grab on and move this around. You can grab onto the corner and make other adjustments as well. So it's certainly a really nice thing to have here and it's very convenient. And then to get out of it, all you have to do is just tap outside of the interface. And then now the phone is back to the way it was before. Now the next feature I want to show you is called side key. So this is already enabled by default, but essentially if you double press in the power button, it's going to pull up the camera app and you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system. So this is super convenient. But in addition to that, you can also have this go to any app of your choosing. So to customize this, pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in side key, let that load, there we go right there, side key, and then go there, and you can see that it does go to quick launch camera by default. However, if you wanted to open up a different app, you can go to open app, then go to the gear icon, and you can choose from any of the apps that are installed on the device to then have the side key activate. So for example, maybe I want the side key to activate Facebook. So if I go to Facebook, and then now exit out of here. If I double press now on the power button, it's going to pull up that app. So it's a really cool way to pick an app of your choosing to have really quick and easy access to it. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A23. So to take a screenshot, all you have to do is hold the volume down and the power button for about a second, and then it takes the screenshot, and then you have options to share or edit. So pretty convenient there. Now moving on, with this device, we do have the three button Android navigation enabled by default. However, the Galaxy A23 also supports gesture based navigation. Now I do know that most people do prefer the three button navigation. However, if you've never used gesture based navigation, I do recommend at least trying it out to see if you actually prefer that over just the standard three buttons. Now to get to this, you're going to pull down the shade. You're going to go to the settings, go to search, and then type in nav, let that load, and you'll see right here navigation bar. So go there, then go here, and you'll see that we have a variety of different options. Now the first option is actually to further customize the navigation bar itself. So if you want to have the back button on the left side and the recent apps button on the right side, you can actually change up the button order right here. So that was pretty quick. Now the buttons are switched around. So I definitely recommend giving that a try as well because who knows? you might prefer this configuration instead. And then you'll see the other option here is swipe gestures. Now if you go to swipe gestures, you'll see that the traditional navigation bar now disappears. Instead, we now just have one line at the bottom here. So essentially, to get to your recent apps, you swipe up partially. Then, if you want to go home, you swipe up. And then to go back, you swipe from the side. And then in addition to that, we have some other options here. Now the first option is to adjust the gesture sensitivity. So if you want it to be more sensitive or less sensitive, you can make that adjustment right here. But we also have this other option called swipe from bottom. So essentially, this is almost like a hybrid between the three button standard Android navigation 
and gesture navigation because we now have three lines at the bottom with the middle line taking us home, the line on the left side taking us to our recent apps, and then the line on the right side taking us back. So that's yet another customization you can make to the navigation on this phone. And I definitely recommend trying out all of these so that you can see which one you best prefer. Now the next thing I want to show you is a hidden feature called Edge Panels. So to get to this feature, you're going to have to first enable it because it's not enabled by default. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in Edge, and you'll see right there Edge Panels. So go there, then go here, and you'll see that it's not enabled, so enable that. And then now you'll see this little side notch that pops up on the right side of the phone. So you can actually swipe that out. And then from here, you'll see that we have a variety of different apps that you can quickly access. You can also customize this. So you can edit that to put pretty much any app of your choice in this section here. But in addition to that, you'll see a little gear icon for settings right here. If you go there, we actually have even more options. So you can have apps as your panel, but you can also have people, so various contacts, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, reminders, and even the clipboard. And we also have other options in the Galaxy Store. So let's try out the weather panel. Now that's enabled, if we swipe over and swipe over one more time, you'll now see that I have my local weather right here. Now the next feature I want to show you is called touch sensitivity. So essentially, if you add a screen protector to your A23 and you notice that, that seems to be kind of preventing you from using the touch screen to its fullest abilities, then you can actually adjust the touch sensitivity. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in touch, and you'll see right there touch sensitivity. Then go down to here and you'll see increase the touch sensitivity of the screen for use with screen protectors. So we'll enable that. So now if you have a screen protector on your device, then adding in touch sensitivity should improve your experience. Another feature I want to show you is called easy mode. So if the phone seems too complicated for the user, this is pretty much the ideal solution right here. So if we go to easy mode, you'll see that it uses a simple home screen layout with bigger on-screen items, a longer touch and hold delay to prevent accidental actions, and a high contrast keyboard for better readability. Any customizations you've made to the home screen will then be discarded. So I really don't want to have to redo my whole home screen, but you get the idea. Essentially, if you or maybe someone else that's using this phone seems to want a more simplified, easier experience, which is totally understandable, especially when there's really just so many different features and options with a phone like this, then you can enable easy mode to make the phone easier to use. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A23, we have a very large 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery. So you should expect to get very good battery life out of it. However, if you do find yourself getting through the battery faster than you'd prefer, let me show you a few methods to get more battery life out of the phone. So the first thing is to make some adjustments to the refresh rate. Now with this device, we do have a 90 hertz refresh rate, which gives you a more premium experience, but it's not totally necessary and it does actually use up more battery life compared to the standard 60 hertz. So again, I'd only do this if you find yourself running out of battery pretty often and faster than you'd expect. But if you go from the settings here, go to display, and you'll see this option called motion smoothness. So we'll go there, and you can see by default, it is set to adaptive. So essentially, you'll get smoother animations and scrolling by automatically adjusting your screen's refresh rate up to 90 hertz. So actually, sometimes the phone might actually run at 60 hertz if that seems like the best option. So the phone makes that decision. But if you want things to be at 60 hertz indefinitely, and that's it, then you can see here that you do actually get longer battery life by switching to that. And again, if you switch to that, it's not really gonna change your experience a whole lot when using the phone. Everything still runs normally and everything. So the 90 hertz refresh rate is really just icing on the cake. So if you don't care to have that and you'd rather have longer battery life, and switch to standard, but otherwise I'd probably just keep it at adaptive unless you have any issues that you need to address. Now in addition to that, there's another thing that you can do to get more battery life out of the phone. So when you're on the main settings screen, go down until you see battery and device care. So go there, then go to battery, then you'll see power saving right there. So we have some different options. The first thing is you can just initiate the regular power saving mode here 
And by doing that, it will cut back on some background tasks and syncing and also location data. And then also the phone will be brought down to 60 Hertz as the refresh rate. But to take it even further, you can actually also add in limit apps and home screen. So that's another way to further save battery life here. And then you can also customize whether or not you actually want to limit the CPU speed or brightness. So it's nice that not only do we get power saving here, but you can actually customize the power saving mode itself so that the device will run exactly how you want it to run. Now, in general, I wouldn't recommend enabling power saving unless you specifically need to. So for example, you think you're gonna be away from an outlet for a long period of time, and you're not gonna be able to recharge the phone, then that's definitely where power saving comes in handy. But I wouldn't really use this every day as it's really gonna make the experience you have with the phone not be nearly as good as it potentially could be. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how to hide apps. So with this device, we have the app drawer, of course, and you can see all our various apps that are installed right here. But if there are certain apps that you want to hide, maybe you're just tired of seeing them, maybe it's a certain app that you can't actually uninstall, but you just don't wanna see it here, then you can actually go to the upper right corner, go to these three dots, then go to settings, and then scroll down here until you see hide apps. And then once we're here, we can pick any app that we want to hide. So I'm gonna hide Duo and also Drive. So those are both hidden. And then now, if we go to the app drawer, or even the home screen for that matter, you're not gonna see Duo or Drive anywhere. It's not in any of the folders, so it is indeed hidden. So that's pretty nice. And then if you do wanna bring it back, just go to the same area here, and then remove those from your hidden apps. And then it won't put it right back in the folder that it was in, but now you'll see it here at the end of the app drawer. So that almost concludes this video, but I do wanna show you some cool motion and gesture tricks. So. We're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in motion, and you'll see right there motion and gestures, then go there, and you'll see that we have a variety of different options. Now, a lot of these are already enabled by default, so keep that in mind, but they might not be things though that you're actually aware of. So for example, lift awake is enabled, so it'll turn on the screen when you pick up your phone. Also enabled is double tap to turn on screen, and also double tap to turn off screen. Did you know that that even exists? So essentially, if you double tap on an empty space on the home or lock screen, it will turn off the display. So there we go, it turned off the display, then I can double tap once again, and it turns on the display. And then I can also go to the fingerprint sensor, then to get into the phone. Or if I want to, I can totally just skip, turn on the display and go right to the fingerprint sensor. So a lot of different ways to get into the phone here. But going back to this motion and gestures area, you can see we also have keep screen on while viewing. So it'll keep the screen on if you're looking at it, it uses the front camera to detect your face. So that's another cool option you might wanna consider trying out here. You can see we also have alert when phone is picked up. So your phone will vibrate when you pick it up after missing a call or message, turn over to mute. So if you turn the phone down, it will actually mute the call. And then you can also pull down the notification shade using the fingerprint sensor. So let's enable that. Now with that enabled, all you have to do is swipe down on the fingerprint sensor and it pulls down the notification shade. You can also use it to bring the shade back up. So that's pretty cool. And you can actually do this from anywhere within the operating system. So certainly very convenient there, especially getting on the topic of using the phone with just one hand. It's kind of inconvenient to reach all the way up here. So being able to just swipe down on that fingerprint sensor definitely makes things a bit easier. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy A23. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up, sub to the channel, and make sure to check out all the other content that I have on the channel itself. But take care and have a great rest of your day.